Hello Eden Gardeners and welcome back. Today marks week six before the last frost date. It is a very exciting time because it is time to plant tomatoes. So today on this episode, I'm gonna go over all the tomato varieties that I've chosen from the Dwarf Tomato Project. And we're going to go over how the seedlings are looking from two weeks ago, so eight to 10 weeks. I planted some seeds, so we're gonna take a look at the seedlings, how they're doing and transplant some of them that have produced true leaves. So let's go ahead and jump in. So at six weeks before your last frost date, it is now time to start planting your grains and tomatoes indoors. So grains would be like amaranth, quinoa, sorghum, and tomatoes, now's the perfect time to start your tomatoes. So you're gonna get bigger, a lot faster than your peppers. So that's why we stay, a, we wait a little bit longer to do our tomatoes. Then for winter sowing, you can do another succession planting of lettuce. So every two weeks, you can do a, a sowing of lettuce so that you have lettuce all the time. The things you can do in ground at this time of year, even though we're getting sporadic rains, hails, snow, there are some plants that you can still plant in the ground because when we get a nice warm day like yesterday, the ground is mushy and it is ready to plant in. So that's perfect for some of these, uh, these crops that I'm about to tell you because they need that wet soil, they need that cool soil temperature to germinate. So that would include things like radishes, parsnips, and carrots. Those really do need a lot of moisture when they are germinating, they need that cool temperature, and they will do quite well now. Once you see them start to sprout, you can then put a fleece row cover to protect the seedlings, and they will do just fine in the ground. Especially parsnip, that is one crop that it really benefits from going in the ground directly early in the season. It takes over 100 days to really produce a crop it is a full season crop, so choose your location wisely, but it is a pain to start germinating in warmer weather. And here in Montreal, we just really get that sudden hot weather. We go from this miserable late winter into full blown summer, really, really hot weather. So parsnip is a great thing to be planting at this time of year. All in all, you can put your root crops in the ground right now and they will do just fine. The next thing to put in ground is Chinese cabbages. So that would be your tatsoi, your pak choy, your bok choy. Those can all be seeded at this time of year and they will do just fine. They are hardy, they can take a frost, but planting it this time of year, it'll benefit from that moist, cold soil. And then the other thing that benefits this time of year, planted in ground, is your peas especially your your manche tout or um, your snow peas. Snow peas are one of my favorites. We always put a bunch of varieties in. Um, we go through the garden, I just snack on them all the time. They're great for kids, they're great for your dogs if you like to feed your dogs from the garden. Um, and peas are perfect to be putting at this time of year. The pea shoots do not mind a cold frost. They are going to do exceptionally well this time of year. And you can plant your snow peas, your early peas, you can put in your main crop peas, your shelling peas, any kind of pea you can put in now. And you can succession sow every two weeks all throughout the spring season so that you have a continuous crop if that's your preference. So without further ado, I'm going to go into all of the tomatoes that I have chosen from the Dwarf Tomato Project this year. More and more people want to garden, but they are gardening in containers or they're gardening in limited spaces. Small yards, even if it's a large yard, maybe you want a really good crop or a good bushel of, of tomatoes from a small space. The benefit of the Dwarf Tomato Project is that you can get all of the benefits of the flavor, the quality, the production, the resistance for your climate of your favorite varieties of tomatoes that you would normally plant in a smaller, more compact size. So something like purple calabash, you might be very used to that, or Cherokee purple. And that might be your mainstay that you buy every year, but it's so big that you can only have one plant. Whereas the choice of 
Rosella, dwarf Rosella purple from the Dwarf Tomato Project is a really comparable fruit, but from a much more compact size, a lot easier to manage, and a lot less pruning and maintenance and things like that that you have to do with them. So this year I chose a few and I'm going to dedicate a good chunk of the garden to growing these varieties. And I thought I'd share them with you because it's still early enough that you could order your own seeds and try them in your yard and let me know, let the community know just how they did for you. So the two Roma tomatoes, so paste tomatoes that I chose from this initiative is the 10 fingers of Naples. I chose it because it's supposed to be an even better flavored variety than the Roma tomatoes. The plant itself is bigger than a Roma plant, it gets five feet, but I wanted to try the flavor and the ones I got last year were very good so I'm hoping that its production is just as good as the Roma's. The second one is Dwarf Audrey's Love. It has a high yield milder flavor but i'm hoping to see if there's a difference in the disease resistant the productivity something like that last year it was pretty productive and it was one of the ones that lasted into the season the longest without getting a disease in terms of beef steak tomatoes a lot of people love purple calabash and they love um, the brandywine tomatoes so this initiative has a dwarf version of something that tastes just like that so you have the Dwarf Roselle Purple, which is supposed to be very similar to the Purple Calabash Tomato. That is my usual go-to beefsteak tomato in terms of the flavor profile that I like and that my family likes. So finding a Dwarf version that grows really well in a shorter season has been really great. So I'm hoping that it does well this summer and that I can replace the Purple Calabash completely in my small yard. A second one is the Dwarf Rosella Crimson. Now that one is supposed to be a version of the Brandywine. And that one also did rather well last year. I think that one needs a little bit longer in the ground, a little bit heat, hotter weather. Um, so I'm hoping it performs better this year in terms of its overall growth as a, as a plant. I think the production will go up this year because we're supposed to have a dry, hot climate this summer. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed. The next one is Dwarf Tasmanian Chocolate. That one is a mahogany colored one. It's a little bit smaller, uh, five to seven ounces, but again, it seemed like a really interesting tomato. It produced well last year, so I'm hoping that it's going with a longer season this year, it's gonna do even better. Next one was a bush beef steak. So if you like um, big beef tomatoes, that's a, a usual staple that most people go for when they go to a garden center, and they're gonna be familiar with that one. So the bush beef steak only gets three feet. It's 62 days to maturity, and that was really interesting to me because that means you can do two harvests of it. You can plant it early in the season and then midsummer and get a fall harvest. So I think I might do two sets of the bush beef steak just because it is prolific, it is a dwarf, and it is determinant. So it will produce all of its fruit right in the middle of the summer, and then I can plant a new one and get a fall harvest. The other type that I am going to try this summer is round tomatoes, and I chose two. I chose Sophie's Choice and Salis. So Sophie's Choice is supposed to be good for early seasons in Canada and cool climate. So I'm hoping that that does even better in the spring um, as, or in the early summer when you put out your tomatoes, I'm hoping that it's going to do even better. So if we do get a weird summer and that it doesn't end up being as hot as it's supposed to be, I'm hoping that that one still produces quite reliably. Silets is also a cool climate variety and I'm hoping that it's also going to produce really well. I always like to put a few early varieties. Usually I put um, Outdoor Girl or Early Girl, which is a pink variety but I find that it's indeterminate, it's too big. They're not as hardy for early climate here in the east as much as I'd like. They tend to get spots and mildew and things. They don't handle the, the wet as well as I'd like. So I'm hoping that these two, which I didn't try last year, um, do much better. I am trying a few other ones, but those are all the ones that I'm gonna choose from the Dwarf Tomato Project. I'm gonna keep you guys informed as to the progress of how are things going. This week I also had some seedlings that were from the 8 to 10 week video 
that I had planted and they had to get transplanted this week. They already had their true leaves. So I'm gonna put some video in here of me transplanting some of them and go through, you know, how, how to tease out your seedling, how to transplant. And then what I do is I cut back all the ones that I don't need and use those as microgreens. I find that a good use of seedlings that maybe didn't grow as well or that I just don't need that many. See you guys back in a minute. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? No. So that's it for this week, guys. Make sure to like and comment below. Subscribe if you're new here. I'd really love to hear what you're going to be growing. I can't wait to see you next week. Bye.